Hey people of the earth, a while ago I made a video showcasing mods that aim to fix Fallout 4's bullet sponge problem. While that video is still pretty decent, there were some areas I didn't cover, and new mods have come out since then. It's time to revisit this topic and do it better the second time around. People have been complaining about bullet sponge enemies in Bethesda games since Fallout 3 at least. Listen to any Starfield review and I guarantee there will be an offhand comment in there somewhere about how tanky enemies are and how annoying it is. What people don't realize is that having RPG mechanics at all is what causes this problem. Making a game that features perks, collectible items, drugs, and weapon attachments that affect damage necessitates eschewing realism in favor of a nonsensical combat system where low-level enemies can die instantly after one shot to the leg from a pistol, while high-level enemies eat magazines worth of lead for breakfast. This is not just a Bethesda game problem, but a problem with every FPS RPG hybrid. The telltale sign is that near-ubiquitous enemy health bar you'll see in all of these games, which basically represents the developers throwing their hands up in the air and saying, yeah, we know there's no diegetic way of determining how much health an enemy has, so we're just going to tell you with this health bar. Our goal today is to eliminate or minimize all of these RPG elements that are getting in the way of Fallout 4 being one of the best open-world FPS games ever made. Because behind the bloated HP bars, Fallout 4 has all the pieces needed for a responsive, brutal, and realistic combat system. The animations, the dismemberment, the multi-layer damage on robots and synths. It's all incredible stuff, but the numbers controlling it are wrong. We need mods to fix this mess, and a list of all the mods I tested out is on screen right now. My recommendations for which of these mods you should actually use have definitely changed over the past few months, since I've discovered one really terrible problem with true damage. I can still happily recommend Scourge to normalize the health of all NPCs by their species, but without true damage, we need a whole bunch of mods just to do what true damage used to do alone. Using the relatively new Robco Patcher mod, I believe it's possible to universally eliminate the damage differences between receivers to emulate what true damage does to balance weapons. However, nobody has made a mod like that yet, as far as I know, and I don't have the skill with Robco Patcher to do it myself or give any advice. Until someone makes this kind of mod, which will probably happen within a week knowing my luck, I would advise you to be very selective about the weapon mods you download, and just make peace with the fact that attachments can wildly influence the damage of a weapon, even though it doesn't make any sense. To control incoming and outgoing damage, you can use the mod Game Configuration Menu. I'd recommend setting the multipliers to 1 for whatever difficulty you choose to play on, and if that's too difficult you can reduce incoming damage further if necessary. To fix Survival Mode Adrenaline so it doesn't boost your damage anymore, you can either use the mod Adrenaline Redone or use the Adrenaline Module ESP from True Damage without using True Damage itself. It's up to you. Personally, I prefer Adrenaline Redone. I think it's a much better mod. To remove damage increasing perks, again, you can either use True Damage's Perks Module without True Damage or use the mod Double Damage Perk Overhaul to give you all the damage benefits of these vanilla perks without the investment. The latter option would best be paired with higher health values set in Scourge, so enemies don't die in one hit like they're made out of paper mache. The mod Hardcore Health Overhaul is what I would recommend for body part changes. It enables non-lethal dismemberment for humans and makes limbs easier to cripple. It also increases the damage headshots do. Additionally, it removes the extra health you get for leveling up, which is great. Scourge will overwrite its changes to NPC health, so there's no need to worry about that. There are some new mods you should be using too. Direct Hit will add some sense to Fallout 4's armor system, and Bastion will make power armor as protective as it should be. You'll also need the mod Scaling Flag Remover to fix an issue with Scourge that occurs whenever you level up. I would also recommend a Loot Reduction mod of your choice to reduce the prevalence of ammunition in the world, because you'll be needing a lot less of it to kill enemies now. And if you don't like how overpowered stealth sniper builds are, you can remove sneak attack criticals for ranged weapons with the mod No Gun Sneak Attack Multiplier. With all these mods, you'll have to play Fallout 4 like it's a semi-tactical shooter. No more standing out in the open like you're playing with squirt guns. You'll need to use cover and react quickly to avoid being taken out by enemies. The game is a lot more enjoyable this way without a doubt. Those are my recommendations, now let's go over all the mods I looked at in detail. First up we have Direct Hit, a mod that's only a few weeks old but I wish it came out 8 years ago. 
One of the biggest problems Fallout 4's armor system has is that wearing an armor piece adds damage resistance to your entire body, not just the parts covered by the armor. Direct Hit fixes this issue, so armor pieces only provide protection for the body part they cover. Of course, it isn't perfect, nothing ever is in this game. Helmets that don't cover the face will still protect your entire head, because Fallout 4 doesn't have separate hitboxes for different parts of the head. Also, I think Ballistic Weave still covers your entire body, but I'm not sure. If that's the case, this mod would make Ballistic Weave even more overpowered than normal. Perks and chems that increase your damage resistance still cover the entire body as well, which means the toughness perk might actually be worth taking now. Since armor overall is less effective when using direct hit, it may be wise to download the optional armor buff add-on to this mod. Using the Robco patcher, all armor mods in your load order can be patched to provide increased protection. One last problem is that damage predictions in VATS will be incorrect when using Direct Hit, since these predictions still use the old damage formula. With Direct Hit, you will almost always do more damage than the preview shows, but this isn't a huge deal. Other than these quibbles, this mod is great. It doesn't solve the bullet sponge problem on its own, but it certainly helps. Second, we'll look at Bastion, another incredible new mod that makes a great companion to Direct Hit. What it does is make anyone in power armor, including you, completely immune to damage, both physical and energy. The only ways to get through power armor are either use weapons that can penetrate it, which by default means explosives or 50 cal rounds, or damage the armor so much that it breaks and you can shoot through. Keep in mind, when you're using Bastion with direct hit, you have to set power armor negation to zero in direct hit's any file, otherwise weapons won't penetrate power armor. A mod like this is essential when using a realistic damage overhaul, because otherwise, power-armored enemies are complete pushovers, when they absolutely shouldn't be. If any enemy has an excuse to be a bullet sponge, it's guys wearing power armor. Next up, we've got better locational damage. This mod manually edits just about every single record related to Fallout 4's combat, and adds a few new scripted mechanics on top of that, namely bleeding, pain, staggering, and instant kill headshots. The main difference between 8 months ago and today is the latest version of Better Locational Damage now supports the Robco Patcher mod, which should give it more compatibility with modded weapons right out of the gate, as long as these modded weapons use vanilla or munitions ammo types, or the few other types automatically supported by the BLD Robco patch. Still, I don't like a lot of the changes BLD makes. The reload speed changes in particular make it feel like some weapons are animating in slow motion, and I don't like how dismemberment is disabled by default. But the mod does make up for it somewhat by having live dismemberment when you enable brutality in the MCM, and there's even a bleed-out mechanic for it. That shit is great. Instant kill headshots don't seem to be as delayed as they were before. Whether that's because my new CPU is much faster or the script was improved, I'm not sure. The bleeding, pain, and staggering mechanics still feel like a pain in the ass to me, but I have no doubt some people will love them, and it is possible to disable or configure these mechanics via the MCM. I like how the damage bonuses from damage increasing perks and adrenaline were reduced greatly, but I would prefer mods that eliminate these bonuses entirely. I'm not a fan of a lot of this mod's changes, but if you are, by all means, get better locational damage. It's a well-made mod, and with Robco patcher support, most of my earlier complaints about compatibility have gone straight out the window. Fourth, we've got MAME, a mod that isn't working for me right now. Even when I load only it and its dependencies, stim packs and blood transfusion kits, which are just renamed blood packs, don't heal me. Period. MAME Lite did work for a while, but stim packs healed so insanely slowly you could basically forget about healing during combat. And eventually MAME Lite stopped working too. If this mod did work, it would still do nothing to fix Fallout 4's bullet sponge problem, aside from adding instant kill headshots. But instant kill headshots don't make sense when an enemy still takes 50 body shots to kill. At the end of the day, you'd still need Scourge to fix enemy health, and if you're looking for a mod that adds bleed-out mechanics, better locational damage is a much safer bet. Maybe the upcoming MAME 3 update will make this mod worth using, so track that shit on the Nexus, but don't bother with it right now. Also unfortunately not worth bothering with is True Damage, a mod I want to love. I recommended it last time, but it has a critical flaw that ruins everything. You see, the way True Damage works is it adds a metric fuckton of damage to all ballistic ammo types. 
Doing this by itself would make every gun do ridiculous damage, so to prevent that, the mod divides the final damage by 10, the end result being that damage is mostly influenced by the extra damage, not the original damage of the weapon. The problem is that for some reason, this division process doesn't occur on critical hits, so instead of doing double damage like normal, a critical hit will do around 20 times the damage value of your gun, pretty much guaranteeing an instant kill on anything. And that's a huge problem that I never noticed in my original video because I wasn't using VATS much. True damage is pretty much unusable until this bug is fixed. Next up we have Scourge, which is still a godsend. This mod re-rolls the health and damage resistances of all NPCs and creatures via scripting whenever they appear, and lets you individually configure these variables from the MCM. Don't like how much health turrets have? You can make them explode in one shot if you want. Do you want synths to be resistant to gunfire but not energy weapons? You can make that happen. Scourge puts the tools you need to customize Fallout 4's combat to your tastes right at your fingertips. I like setting a wide range of health values because it makes combat more interesting. You don't know whether the next raider you encounter will go down in one or two shots or take five or six. Maybe they're hopped up on chems or maybe you miss their vital organs, who knows. This mod can be used to make every enemy unique. Scourge also works well with quest mods that might add overpowered enemies. As long as they still use vanilla races, Scourge will fix that right up like it was never even a problem. I have nothing bad to say about Scourge, it never leaves my load order. However, if you use Scourge, you'll need the mod Scaling Flag Remover. To put it succinctly, this mod fixes a bug that occurs when you level up and there's still enemies nearby that causes Scourge's health changes to be overwritten with vanilla values. I'm sure you can imagine how annoying it is to have enemies suddenly become as spongy as they are in vanilla in the middle of combat, so I'm glad this mod exists to fix the issue. No Gun Sneak Attack Multiplier is next. It simply changes one game setting to remove ranged sneak attack criticals. I talked about why I chose this particular mod in my earlier video. If you like ranged sneak attack criticals, don't use this mod, but if you hate them, place this mod near the bottom of your load order so it doesn't get overwritten, and enjoy. After that we've got Curse, Combat Overhaul Mod. This mod is very new and only has a few hundred downloads, so it's a ripe candidate for a review. Curse is a script-free overhaul of the game, and it should be compatible with most other mods since it doesn't add any new items, and it doesn't touch weapons, ammunition, or projectile data. It does edit body part data, enabling non-lethal dismemberment and changing damage multipliers for body parts. In general, headshots will do more damage than vanilla, while limb shots will do less. Limb health is greatly reduced across the board, so crippling is more common. These changes are good. Curse also makes some changes to AI-related game settings, mainly decreasing light levels and increasing the distance to which NPCs can flee. Curse makes changes to combat styles too, but not in a bad way like arbitration. Enemies will still block. I've noticed melee enemies are more likely to power attack, and super mutants and raiders should be less accurate with their weapons fire, while gunners will be slightly more accurate. These are pretty typical changes for an AI mod, and I don't consider any of them to be bad. What I don't like are the changes this mod makes to melee combat. Power attacks can no longer be blocked, and blocking no longer completely prevents damage. Smaller melee weapons can't block larger weapons anymore. Melee sneak attack criticals are supposed to do extra damage, but this has not been properly implemented. I think the mod author used a game setting that only works in Skyrim, not Fallout 4. So the one buff that was intended to help melee weapons doesn't even work. The end result of all these changes is melee weapons being a lot harder to use than normal, which is not a good thing considering how shitty melee weapons already are in vanilla. I'm also not a fan of the new VATS, which now happens at 60% of full speed instead of 4%. The new VATS makes you take full damage when executing your attacks instead of the 10% damage of the vanilla game. I think full damage is a bit much, maybe 50% damage resistance would be better. You can also move around during the execution phase of VATS, which serves little practical purpose other than ruining your shots. Ranged sneak attack criticals have been nerfed to do 50% more damage instead of double damage, which is a good change, but I'd rather have them gone completely. Difficulty damage modifiers have been changed, which is unnecessary. I think you're better off using game configuration menu to tweak the difficulty damage modifiers to your liking. Adrenaline and Curse no longer gives you extra damage, but instead increases your damage resistance up to 25%. This is a multiplicative effect, so wearing more armor will make this effect more useful. I think Adrenaline Redone handles Adrenaline better than this mod, but this isn't bad by any means. 
Critical hits outside of VATS are a thing in Curse. Every point in luck gives you a 1% chance to land a critical hit. Interestingly, unlike Fallout 3 and New Vegas and Starfield, there's been no attempt to balance automatic weapons by giving them a lower critical chance. This could be a problem with high rate of fire weapons, maybe they're unbalanced, but I didn't do in-depth testing on that. Walking speed has been increased, but jogging and sprinting speeds have been lowered slightly. Being crippled will screw up your aim more than vanilla, and it will also hurt your action point regeneration speed as well as melee damage. The signature feature of Curse is something called Trauma. When an enemy is crippled or dismembered, they will take tons of trauma damage, and the more health they have, the more trauma damage they'll take. Of course, this doesn't totally alleviate the bullet sponge issue because enemies will still soak up a ton of damage until you manage to trigger a trauma event. Still, this mod does go a long way to fixing the bullet sponge problem, and it does it in a very compatible way without using the script extender. This mod would be extremely useful for people on Xbox, but unfortunately it isn't available on Bethesda.net right now. Double Damage Perk Overhaul is our next mod. It starts you off with all the damage bonuses of the vanilla game's damage increasing perks and the grenade indicator from the Demolition Expert perk too. These perks haven't been removed from the chart and they retain their other benefits, so they're still worth taking. I like what this mod does and I don't have anything bad to say about it, so let's move on to Adrenaline Redone, which is an excellent mod. I think it's actually a lot better than true damages or better locational damages adrenaline ESPs. BLD just reduces the adrenaline damage bonus, and true damage converts it into an experience multiplier, but this mod actually gives you some useful effects like damage resistance and extra melee damage. This can help make a melee build more viable. After combat ends, adrenaline dissipates within a few minutes, regardless of whether you sleep or not. There's a settings holo tape that lets you adjust how fast your adrenaline goes away. I didn't expect this mod to be so good. Definitely give it a try. It makes adrenaline way better. Hardcore Health Overhaul is our final mod for today, and it's mainly useful for its body part damage changes. It enables live dismemberment for humans, and makes headshots do five times as much damage as normal. It also disables health gain on leveling up for the player and NPCs. Furthermore, it edits nearly every NPC in the game to adjust their health to realistic standards, and oh boy, I hope these edits were made with an automated tool, or else there was a lot of manual work put into this mod. In any case, if you're using Scourge, these health changes will be overridden anyway, so there's no need to worry about them. Alright, that's all the mods I have for today. It's a shame how many of them were broken trash, but hey, you can still cobble together a working load order if you try hard enough. I hope you found this video at least somewhat useful. Until next time, toodles! Damn, it takes a whole hand to count how many patrons I have. I don't know what I'll do when I get past 10.